Yo, what up? Welcome back to the masterclass. Today we're going to talk about air to ground missiles. And look, today's episode is going to be a little bit long, and I'm sorry for that, but we're going to cover all of the possible AGMs that you can put on the FA26 in one video. So I'm going to do my best to get through this as quick as possible, but I'm going to cover all of the missiles here. So make sure you check the chapters if you're looking for a specific missile on how to like go ahead and employ it, right? So like Look at the chapters, find the missile you're after, and you'll be good to go. If you want to know about all of them, hey, watch the whole thing through. All right, if you're ready for a big one, but we're going to cover air to ground missiles, I'll see you in the cockpit. All right, here we go. We're in the cockpit. This should be familiar by now. First, let's go ahead. Master arm on. Bet. Visor down. Good. We are going to start out with our AGM 65s. These are fire and forget missiles. They allow us to... Pick a target with a targeting pod, shoot them, and then get out of dodge. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm scanning for a target over here currently. I know there's one off to our right. We can kind of see it right here on our RWR. Uh, DS is a SAM site. It's a, it's a dish radar. So let's go ahead and we're going to pull up the TGP. We're going to power that on. I'm actually going to turn on the ARAD. I don't really need it. It's just like a bigger view of the, the RWR. We don't really need it for this. We're going to go ahead and, and have it on anyway. I'm going to make my turn and we're going to try to identify those targets on the ground and then we'll fire one of these missiles. So these are, there we go. These are really great for moving targets. Um, so if you had tanks or mobile artillery, uh, this is when you'd want to use this missile. In this mission though, there's nothing moving. So we're just going to shoot it at a static SAM site. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit head uh and our target is right over here and we should be able to zoom around a little bit oh there it was and sweet so that's what you do you slew the tgp to where you get that automatic lock for this thing and then since it is a missile here is our shoot bracket we're used to seeing this with missiles the top open part like the enemy could technically get away right it's a turn and run range especially for like an aim 120. for these air to ground missiles it's a little bit different right obviously a static target can't turn and run but we can fire in the open area it's not an optimal shot what we're really hoping for is that that carrot drops all the way down and gets into the enclosed rectangle in which we have a much more optimal shot and we can pull the trigger and fire while we're navigating into more of a, a shoot friendly range let me show you the options for this if we go to the equipment this is the agm 65 you have the only, the only option is is uncage mode which is manual or auto and that means either you're pulling the trigger to slew the uh the seeker head over to the target and then pressing the weapon change button to fire or you're going to switch it to auto and it will automatically slew for you onto the target okay uh, i like it on manual just because when you fly other jets it's, it's helpful to have things kind of be the same so here we go we're in range i press the trigger it slews down because i'm in manual i press the weapon chains button and our air to ground missile our agm 65 is on the way to do death and destruction to our enemies we're just going to make a big old turn here and hopefully we'll be able to see the impact of this missile we can slow down slow down a little bit and we'll just make a small little orbit here boom there you go okay so we had impact right so azm 65s remember these are fire and forget i did not have to maintain a lock with the targeting pod i could have flown off to safety which is what i highly recommend you do if you're firing these and again they also track moving targets these are mostly anti-tank all right moving on to the agm 88 this is the harm this is an anti-radiation missile so i'm going to have the targeting pod pulled up but only so we can see the impact of things. You do not need the targeting pod for this air to ground missile. You're actually going to use the ARAD, the anti-radar attack display, and it's going to show you targets that are emitting radars. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to lock onto one of those radars. So you want to make this soy, and you are going to slew this little cursor over the target, click the stick, and once we turn around here you we should get a shoot cue in which we there's our shoot cue so we will fire this missile 
5,000. Tracking south. Leans on Overlord. Yeah, Overlord needs to learn how to stop talking. Um, <laughs> we fired the missile. It's in flight all the way over there. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the head tracker down here fast enough. There we go. We can see it coming in. And boom. So AGM-88s. You pick your target here. And you can fire them. And once you fire them, you can leave. You do not have to maintain a target track or a target lock. You can get to safety. And that's the whole point. Our AGM-126s, these are a short-range air-to-ground missile, okay? They are fired the exact same way that the AGM-88s were. So we're going to come over here. We are going to designate one of these targets. Short-range still means good range. We do have our shoot cue here. So we're going to go ahead and fire the missile. And it's off. Right? We don't have to maintain lock. We can actually break it if we really want to. We can do whatever we want. It's going to pick up on that radar and impact the target. We're not going to be able to see the impact, but what we will do is we will watch these little symbols on the screen. We'll pretend that we have like a lot of standoff distance and we, sh we should see one of these, one of these signatures, one of the DSs should lose track on us, right? We should see it disappear from the visor and that means that we killed it, right? So it should take just a moment and our missile should be impacting probably that one on the right. I honestly think it's right here. So we should actually be able to see it on the TGP when it does die. There it goes, boom, all right? So we still had pretty good range uh, and that missile is out of there. So we can go ahead and look at the equipment options for the 126. You'll see there are none. And we actually failed to look at the ones for the 88s. So AGM 88s. Let me just make sure that the screen doesn't change. Right, there are none. So none for the 88s and none for the 126s. They just fire on the ARAD screen and that's the end of it. Okay, the next missile we have is the AGM-89. This is an anti-ship missile, so really you're shooting this at naval targets, but it has a lot of different options. There's this terminal mode, which is like what the missile is going to do once it gets within range of the target. So there's a couple different options. There's pop-up, there's direct, there's sea skim, and there's sea skim evasive. Sea skim evasive is going to be the most commonly fired method for this missile. Let's talk about each one of these really quick. First is pop-up. The missile is going to skim the water. It's going to fly towards the target. When it gets close, it's going to shoot up in the air and kind of do a top-down attack on the target. Pop-up. It's in the name. Direct is just like the rest of the air-to-ground missiles that we've just launched. It will fly through the air directly at the target, and it is the least successful firing or terminal mode. It's likely to get shot down by the ship's defenses. Sea skim is like direct only it travels just a few feet above the water and the goal is to hit the ship where the hull meets the water and also evade the ship's countermeasures and sea skim evasive is just like sea skim only it wiggles back and forth as it gets close to the ship and you're probably going to fire this one most often so how do we use this thing it's tricky we need gps so we have to like designate with either the targeting pod or the nav page and we have to lead the target now here's the downfall and the downfall right now is i don't have any enemy ships so we're actually going to take a shot at these friendly ships right over here which isn't the nicest thing um, you do have to lead the target so you take this cross you make this soy this is the nav page you take this cross and you then press this gps s button that's going to put a target path there for us and we're hopefully going to shoot there. And maybe, if we're lucky, the ship will be at that point when the missile is. So you kind of have to aim this one. It's a little bit trickier to use. So there you go. We fired it. Let's see what happens. Um, I tend to miss with these. These are not the easiest missiles in the world to use. Uh, I, I think we're absolutely going to miss with this one too. It's probably going to be a little bit short. And... To be fair, one of the reasons we're missing is like there's no like signature for the missile to pick up on. We are shooting at friendlies. 
One thing you could do to make this easier would be fly lower. Get behind the targets or in front of them. And uh, kind of, oh, see, we missed. So we didn't lead it enough, but that's, that's how you fire them. I intend to miss with these. These are friendly ships. Um, and I just don't expect to hit. But what you could do is you could get low. You could be behind these ships, for example, and try to fire them that way. You'll probably have a little bit more luck should you do that. So we have one more air to ground missile to cover. So I'm gonna land and rearm and I'll meet you back in the air when we get to that missile. Okay, we are back in the air. We have some AGM 161s while we're flying in the direction we need to. Let's take a look at them. We have no options, right? So these are really easy to use. Um, they are going to be similar to another air to ground missile that we fired. You're going to grab the TGP. This is one of many ways you can do it. You can also designate a nav point on the map. Uh, these are GPS guided, right? So you could do what we did with the anti-ship missile and say, Hey, I want to fire at this spot. Let me send that to the GPS page. And if I do that, I can then fire this missile towards that GPS point. This will work, and what's cool about this is you can actually like build a path over here for the missile to follow, and then hope it hits. The thing with this is though, is you have to come into each one of these points and actually set the elevation so that you don't steer the missile into a mountain, which can be a little bit difficult. So we're not gonna fire it this way. We're gonna show you the other way to fire it. So I'm actually just gonna pull the GPS up on this side and the targeting pod on this side. And we are going to use the targeting pod to acquire a GPS target. So let's fly back over to the targets that we know exist over here. We'll find one of them really quick and we will send their coordinates to our GPS target list. I don't remember if they're over here or not though. I always seem to lose these guys. They are kind of off to our 11 o'clock. Maybe it's here. There we go. It's here somewhere. Awesome. So look, here we go. We have a target. We'll zoom in on it. We get this lock. Now if we press the GPS S button, which is send, it's going to come over here. And now we can actually use our cruise missile. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a big old turn just so that we can get some standoff. And I'll turn around and we will fire it right here at this target. While we're making this turn, like most of the other air to ground missiles, once you fire these, you can leave, right? So either we had the optical fire and forget, or we set up um, the ARAD and it was like searching for the target from there, or we set up GPS points, right? All of these are designed for you to shoot them and leave. So you don't have to stick around. You don't have to stay in harm's way. And even the short range stuff tends to have pretty good range to it. So these are great weapons to use if you need standoff distance from SAM sites to complete your missions. So we're just gonna make this turn. We're super close. You could fire this missile from like 60 nautical miles away. The higher you get and the faster you get, the further range you get out of this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn right in. And we should see some sort of shoot cue. Any moment. Shoot. There we go. I just had to steer down a little bit towards the target. And we can shoot. And now we can delete that group. We don't have to hold the lock over here. We can move it. Um, we will hold it though, just so that we can see the impact. The AGM-161 is very slow for whatever it's worth. So it, it is going to take time to reach that target. So we'll just maintain an orbit around the target. Just this really slight 45 degree orbit so that our targeting pod hopefully can still see it, which we did lose gimbal. We can still see it down here manually. So we'll just move this down and out of the way. And there you go, AGM-161. So that's air to ground missiles, man. That's absolutely all of them. Uh, maybe not in the world's most in-depth discussion and uh, showing the different modes that exist, but 
that's how you fire all the air ground missiles in VTOL VR. So if you like the video, you know what to do, like the video. And if you like what's going on on the channel, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you stick around. And as always, we will see you in the next episode.